Hi, today I'm going to tell you about girlfriends who were forced to play the adult game to pay back their debt. Three women are digging a hole next to a car in the woods. The women's faces are covered by masks and goggles. Having created a large enough hole, they lower several bags of bloody hands inside. In the next scene, Petula and Tilda calculate how much drugs they have and how much they can sell. Unfortunately, they don't have time to enjoy the prospect of a prosperous future, because the police knock on the door with a furious shout, open up. The girls make the wise decision to climb out the window onto the fire escape where they escape the cops. The only bad thing is that they fail to retrieve their nearly $100,000 worth of merchandise. While her friend is talking to the dealer, Tilda steals a random train passenger's purse to straighten out her finances. Suddenly the conductor appears and demands her ticket. Since Petula has no ticket, she is forced to make amends in kind, which in this case is fetishism. The conductor licks the girl's legs, submitting to her domination. After paying the bill, the girl tidies herself up in front of the mirror. As they get off the train, they notice a tramp outside the train station. This man laughs at them, saying that witches always return to these places. They have two days to return to the merchant and in that time pay for the missing goods. The idea is to break into their rich friend Daphne's house. There is a safe in the mansion that has money lying around somewhere. In order to enter the house, one must accept the conditions, namely, to play house with the mistress. Dressed right in the cab, Tilda goes to the mansion in her school uniform. She enters the kitchen and greets Daphne, calling her not by her first name, but her mother. While her mother feeds her daughter, Tilda examines the interior of the room, guessing where the safe might be. Petula is a doctor about to step in. She prepares for her journey with the tools by remembering the rules. There are only three of them. The first states that everyone participates in the game, the second states that no outsiders may enter the game, and the last states that no one may leave the game. When Tilda's mother suddenly notices her negligent daughter's long, dirty fingernails and unbrushed teeth, she grabs a huge pair of scissors and begins trimming her nails in an attempt to cut off her fingers. The sound of the doorbell saves the frightened crook. Dr. Petula arrives. The friends act out a scene for the landlady with an examination. Daphne does not like the superficial examination of her supposedly sick daughter and insists on a more thorough examination, including torture with a meat hammer to test her reflexes. Smashing Tilda's knee in the blood, which leaves the housewife thrilled. The attentive mother invites the doctor over for dinner. She treats the doctor and his rope-bound daughter to a strange soup. Soon she invites the weary doctor into her room. Tilda is left alone. When Petula hears some sound, she is still lying on the bed. Going outside to investigate, she catches Daphne in the kitchen taking pills. From the sink, the hostess pulls out a knife. With it, she strokes the doctor's neck and begs her to stay to make her feel better. She kisses her friend and then they pretend to have sex on the table. In the morning, Tilda tries to pick the lock of the mailbox while Petula watches her. Tilda questions the amount the hostess spent on the doctor's visit. The girl opens the envelope, but all she finds is hand-drawn money. Tilda is furious about this, but they still have 28 hours to find the safe. Tilda takes some pills to calm herself, thinking they are Vicodin, but they are not really painkillers. As a result, the girl begins to see herself and her friends as more children. Petula also takes one pill and runs into the house. Tilda rushes outside looking for young girls. She is unsure of her actions. She is haunted by memories of herself and the girls in the treehouse. She starts cursing because it's a stupid game and she's sick of it. Daphne challenges her, Tilda pushes her, and Daphne falls. The flashback continues with the girls in the hospital corridor discussing what happened with the policeman, to whom they have recently given a mascot as a token of friendship. The doctor reports that she has multiple abdominal injuries. It is unlikely that she will ever be able to have children. An adult Daphne stands in front of a closet full of pregnancy tests. Petula crawls around the mansion, grabbing the walls in search of keys. She finds in the mistress's bedroom then runs outside where meet her friend. She drags her to the car to get away, but Daphne shows up and hits them both over the head with a baseball bat. Detective Siegel tries to eat the leftovers from dinner the night before, and then gets into the police car. There are notices hanging on his desk looking for two girl drug dealers, and he says he will personally take over the case. The two girls are sitting on chairs, 
and Daphne is tied to them with a rope that resembles a long braid of hair. The girls make an attempt to leave and talk. The landlady is annoyed by the noise. The ringing of the doorbell distracts her as she yells at them and calls herself their mother. Detective Siegel arrives after neighbors complain of strange noises. Daphne admits that the reason is a new medicine she is not yet used to. The landlady wants to dismiss the detective, but he notices water dripping from the ceiling and unceremoniously offers to find out what is leaking there. A conversation ensues, during which it is revealed that Daphne's grandparents have recently died. Later, Siegel notices an old photograph of the mistress and the other children. Daphne admits that she has no contact with them, but he wonders what happened to them anyway. She becomes enraged and reacts violently and emotionally. The detective realizes that she knows something and asks where they are. The landlady prefers not to answer. However, when a noise comes from the second floor, the man wants to investigate, but is stopped by a shout demanding a search warrant. The investigator is forced to leave the house. Meanwhile, the girls are looking for the safe. They meet in the dining room and Daphne says she wants to play and reads a riddle. If the guests guess it, she will take all the blame, otherwise the grave will be turned. Although Petula doesn't understand what this means, Tilda convinces her to keep searching for the safe, based on the clues, while she diverts her mother's attention. Petula desperately searches the mansion until she manages to find the hidden safe. Inside, she finds Daphne's legacy. The girl finds Tilda, and together they leave the house at night. The girls try to stop the car on the highway, but no one wants to pick them up. Because of the disagreement, they begin to argue. During the argument, Petula gets hit by a car. In the next scene, she finds herself confined to a wheelchair and Tilda in a tiny wooden cage. Daphne admits that this evening brings back memories of the time she poisoned her grandparents to take her to the hospital. Then she makes the cut on Tilda and Petula's faces as a punishment. Meanwhile, the homeless man the girls meet near the train station is a police station. According to him, the missing girls from the ad appear under the crack like mermaids. Daphne informs them that the game is over and that they must leave the house as quickly as possible before the baby is born. Tilda calls her crazy and points out that she cannot conceive because of her injury, but Daphne disputes this and claims that the doctor is the father. Still silent, Petula enters the conversation and asks her mistress to enter the room, again posing as a doctor. She is talking about pregnancy problems that may require surgical intervention. Thieves in surgical suits prepare for surgery while the mistress lies on the operating table. At this time Detective Siegel appears. When Detective Siegel arrives, he hears music and enters the house with a gun. Just in time, the policeman enters the temporary clinic. At gunpoint, he pushes them away from the body forcing them to raise their hands and kneel down. But as he approaches, a lying Daphne jumps to her feet and stabs him in the back with a scalpel. The detective stumbles, and Tilda and Daphne finish him off with blows, turning his body into a bloody mess. Daphne hands the hammer to Petula so that she too can participate in the massacre. The next scene is the very beginning. Back at the mansion with the police car parked in front of it, the three girls drive it up to the pond and push it into the water. The three of them quickly resume the game, eating dinner at the table as if nothing had happened. After a while, a bloody detective seagull appears in Petula's hallucinations. The girl discovers in the mailbox the same talisman that was given to the policeman. She digs up the detective's grave, but finds no bones there. When she returns to the house, the crook collapses without strength and falls asleep. When the girl first wakes up, she discovers a book hidden under the couch, which contains descriptions of recent events and lives, but only in the form of game rules. The girl then recalls many memories, including how badly her friends treated her. She does not remember how long she has been in the place. Daphne says that Petula often runs away from the Manson, but returns when she forgets about it. You can tell by the scars on her arm how many times she has escaped. For each escape, Daphne left one behind. Petula makes an escape attempt, but gives up when she realizes it is not the first time. In the next scene, the girls use Siegel's paints to sketch in the sketchbook. Despite this, the story is far from over. Completely distraught, the girls decide to commit suicide. Petula hangs herself in her room, Daphne takes poison, and Tilda slits her wrists in the bathroom. In the final scene, we see an old, abandoned house in which an elderly woman is washing the same dishes in the kitchen that Daphne once did long ago. As the door opens, we hear someone ask, what's for dinner tonight? Thanks for watching this video, 
Please subscribe to the channel and have a great day.